Hello, and welcome to our new Android Basics series. In this video series, we'll be teaching you how to use your Android smartphone or tablet. Today's class will be all about apps, what they are, what apps you already have on your device, and how to download new apps from the Google Play Store. Let's get started. What are apps? Apps or applications are small pieces of software dedicated to a specific task. For example, the Gmail app allows you to check your mail, while the Facebook app allows you to check your Facebook account. When you first turn on your device, there are many apps that are already installed. As we discussed in the previous lesson, Android devices aren't solely created by one company. Google makes the Android software, while there are many companies that manufacture the Android hardware. As a result, you might see stock Android apps, apps from Google, and apps from your device manufacturer. Sometimes these apps will compete for the same task. For example, do you want to check your mail with the default mail app or Gmail? Do you want to browse the internet with the default internet app or with Google Chrome? The choice is yours. Making things more complicated, you can also install third-party apps. Third-party apps are apps made by outside developers that typically must be added to the device. These include apps like Facebook, Evernote, and Spotify. The easiest way to add a third-party app to your Android device is to download it from the Google Play Store. We'll talk more about the Google Play Store later in the video. One of the best things about Android devices is having access to Google's free suite of tools, many of which are already pre-installed on your device. It's a good idea to get familiar with these services because you can also access them on Chrome OS devices such as Chromebooks, as well as on the Google website. So let's take a look at some of the most popular Google apps. Google Search. Use Google Search as a quick way to answer questions or search the internet. The Google Search app is available as both an app and a widget. Google Maps. Looking to get from one place to another? Google Maps will show you how to get from point A to point B while reading out directions as you drive. You can also use it to locate local businesses such as restaurants, stores, movie theaters, and more. Gmail. Gmail is an email organization and management app. Use it to read, delete, and sort your mail. Despite its name, the Gmail app can manage more than just Gmail accounts. You can also use it to manage email accounts from Yahoo and Outlook. Google Duo. Google Duo is Google's video calling service similar to FaceTime or Skype. It has replaced Google Hangouts on most Android devices, although Google Hangouts still exist as a service. Google Chrome. Google Chrome is Google's native internet browser, similar to Safari, Firefox, or Internet Explorer. Use Google Chrome to search for information or access your favorite websites. Google Photos. Google Photos is a popular photo organization app. In addition to allowing you to edit and organize your photo albums, Google Photos also provides free cloud storage. Google Drive. Google Drive allows you to organize and backup files on your device, such as documents, spreadsheets, and more. Files can be edited with Google's Microsoft Office competitors, Docs, Sheets, and Slides, which have similar functionality to Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. YouTube. And finally, we have YouTube. YouTube is Google's video sharing platform. Use YouTube to watch tutorials, blogs, news, and more. This was just a short list of some of Google's most popular services, but there are many others. Don't be afraid to try them out. Now let's talk about downloading new apps. While third-party apps can be downloaded from the internet via APK files, it is much easier to download them from the Google Play Store. But before you start downloading any apps, there are a few things you should know. First of all, the Google Play Store is a store, so while some apps are free, others may have fees associated with them. For example, some services like Spotify and Netflix have a monthly subscription fee. Other apps may be free, but have content you need to pay for, such as games with in-app purchases. And some apps have a one-time upfront fee that is listed next to the app. Always be sure to read through the app's detail page to know what type of app you're looking at. You can pay for apps with a credit card that is located in your Google Play account. Don't want to input a credit card? That's okay. You can buy prepaid Play Store gift cards at most stores. Another important consideration is safety. While Google moderates the Play Store, malware and spyware often sneak in. These apps can hurt your device or steal your personal data. 
Again, be sure to read the detail page of each app you download. It will include information about the app, who made it, the app's star ratings, and reviews from other users. Avoid apps with low ratings and downloads. We'll learn more about the detail page in just a little bit. Let's take a look at the Google Play Store. To get started, look for the Play Store's icon. It looks like this. Before tapping on the Play Store, make sure you're connected to the internet first. Once you open the Play Store, you'll see that it has a primary navigation bar. There are several different options here, including games, apps, movies, and books. We'll be using the apps section for today's class. At this point, you can find apps in two different ways. On the apps page of the Play Store, you can browse the apps that are featured on the main page. These might be apps that are new, popular, or recommended for you based on your preferences. Have a specific app in mind? Click on the search bar at the top of the screen and type in the name of the app you're looking for. When you find the app that you want, tap on its name or icon to be taken to the app's detail page. On the detail page, you can view important information like who the developer is, whether or not the app contains in-app purchases, and reviews of the app. Although you don't have to read every single review, it's a good idea to read a few to get an idea of whether or not the app is safe to download and is right for you. Try to avoid apps that don't have many reviews. If you have read the detail page and have decided to download the app, tap the install button or the price if it has an upfront fee. Even if the app is free, you'll be prompted to add a payment method, but you can click skip this step to avoid adding one. Now the app will begin downloading. That's it for your second Android lesson. Keep an eye out for our next video, in which we'll be discussing the Gmail app. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful rest of the day.